Hi guys, Squad here. Welcome to another Transport Fever 2 video. Uh, I forgot what episode number one now, 20 something. <laughs> Crazy times, we're in 2013, look at that. Uh, this is a playthrough series. If you want to look at the video description for the details of the map and the mods that are in use today. Uh, we've started off well, it's back in 1870 when we started this particular journey and we're playing on hard mode. Things are going well, obviously we've got problems, there's always problems to deal with in this game, always problems. Even if it's only growth problems. There's a couple of things that we're going to sort out <coughs> before we get going. We've got a lot to do today. Uh, there's a new industry that I want to sort of tap into. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, just having a quick look at the plastic and goods situation. Um, everything here is doing well. We're, we're moving everything. The plastic's coming in. Uh, the, this line is making absurd amounts of money, uh, as you can see. You know, $170 million so far. Like, absolutely absurd amounts of money. But I did tell you it would. Anyway, I spotted one problem. Well, actually, a couple. Um, I'm going to show you one problem that I saw, and that was to do with when I looked at the lines just to see how things were ticking over. Um, obviously, some lines are performing extremely well, and some of them are losing decent amounts of money, uh, which I need to have a quick flick over these soon. Uh, but this one caught my eye here. <laughs> Minus 44 million. I have to admit, that is highly unusual and I was like hey, minus 40 what's going on minus 44 million on this line like how how are we losing so much is it because we switched it from shuttle and then I just realized something when I looked at this because I was thinking oh maybe we've just got too many cars I mean we've got decent income it's not amazing but 20 million dollars right it's not bad why well, it's like insane expenses and then I spotted the glaringly obvious error which I'm sure you've been screaming about in comments uh we have two locomotives on this, and there's no reason for it. So it's just doubling the overhead of one of these BR-103s. So the first thing I'm going to do is effectively get rid of a locomotive so we can do that by an edit selected vehicle. And then when I look at it, I realize we actually have a loco on the front and back, which is wonderful for tractive effort, you know, and speed and things like this, but absolutely going to cost a fortune uh, to run, as we can tell, minus 44 million. So... We obviously got too much capacity on the line as well. Each one of these is going to cost us money. So we're going to basically just drop things back a little bit. Um, you know, just try and get it so that it breaks even past possibly initially. Let me just make sure that I misclick then. You can actually move cars between these things as well by, by clicking on that. So you can swap things around. Let's try that. We, we should get some money back, get a little bit of a refund. And then hopefully... When we look at it next, it won't quite be so stupidly expensive. It might only be, you know, 40 or 50 million uh, and actually moving things through. But obviously, you know, the passengers are getting moving. So, um, yeah, we'll come back later and check that one out. Um, I did actually have a poke around as well. So I had a look around the, uh, the, the map that we have at the moment. And I do want to start getting more stuff into all... I want to get every city to have... A supply of both of its inputs think of it that way uh, i think there's a mod you can get that increases the um cre increases the supply to three for a member need to check that one out sometime i also uh had a look at what's going on with our steel just checking that's okay when i came down here to the tool section i realized that there was way too many tools um sitting at the port here so what i did was i upgraded some of our um this line here, the Logisol tools, I actually upgraded the ship to one of these things. Let me just show you what that is. Uh, so if I do that, uh, they used to be Axle P, which is uh, carries 220 in four compartments. I was going to go for the Merlin because that was 252, but we've actually unlocked the Virgil Tobo now, which has 600 capacity, uh, which is absolutely huge. So that should take care of any supply problems from here i also told them just to, when they get in just wait a little bit and try and get some stuff so that number should hopefully be 100 percent soon and and we'll see how that gets on so i'll fix that as well um i also upgraded a few locomotives around around the place just to make sure that things were flowing other than that things are ticking along nicely now what do you want to do in today's episode last time we've been focusing on passengers oh before we get going there's one thing i do want to solve passengers that reminded me uh, passengers are a bit of an issue down at the airport here, uh, as you can tell. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of, uh, are they 737s? I can't remember. Yeah, 737s that we dropped on initially. And we have a lot. We're, we're making don't, good money, don't get me wrong. But at each airport, there are enormous queues and we're losing money. Losing passengers, I should say, which means we're losing money. So the first thing we're going to do is 
increase the capacity here. So we've got 737s at the moment. And when it comes to passengers, we don't have a 747, but we do have an A380 if you want to go completely ham on it. But let's just see what we've got. So a 737-100 has a 20 capacity with a six times loading speed. Speeds on the planes tend to be approximately the same when you get into the jet, 778. Um, a 757 is a good option. That increases capacity to 50 and increases the speed and the loading speed. Uh, so that takes your running cost to 4 million from 1.4, but it more than doubles uh, the capacity of, of what you're carrying. So that is a very good option, a 757. If you want to go all the way, you can go all the way up to 777s, seven, seven um, but obviously your running costs are going to increase. Let me see if I can expand this window. It's a bit, the window, like the plane, is a bit too big for the game. So that puts it up to 5 million from, what was that, 4.1, uh, but increases capacity to 69, but a bit slower. And then you can, if you want to, obviously go up to the 777s and get a bit more capacity, but the big boy down here is the A380. $8.8 million uh, with a capacity of 105. You know, I don't think this is going to make great money. I think the 757 is the better option. I'm putting that there now. If this was just a playthrough and I was trying to make money, I'd probably stick a 757 in here. But the interest of the video, shall we say, and I know you guys are going, do it, do it. I will bring out the A380 and you'll see how absurdly big it is. The only question we have is, you know, which livery do you want to slap on this? Do we want to go with uh, Singapore Airlines, Qantas? Let's go with Qantas, why not? Let's have a bit of Qantas on there. 105 capacity, insane running costs. And as you'll see in a second, they are they're huge. They're absolutely huge. Look at these things. So let's see. Is this one just landing? Let's see if it... Look, 271 here. Let's speed it up. You can see what happens a bit like the 747 cargo plane uh, when it gets over to the jetway, it kind of, it's too big for it. They're not, I don't think they're quite as bad as the 747s because they're a bit dumpier, um, but they still clip into the building. But you can see all the passengers there, look, look at them all, just lining up. But it does look pretty cool. Um, obviously the jetway doesn't quite line up with the door, and it sticks his nose right into the building there. That means passengers can just jump through the window and get on board. But hey ho, right, it's, it's a mod, what are you going to do? Just wait for this to load, here we go. So that now loads quicker, and will more or less take about half of the current passenger load. There you go, 105 on board. That will probably make good money, um, but not as much money as it could make. Um, like I say, I don't think A380s were the right choice, but I did it for the lols. Right, what do we want to focus on now? Um, I also reconfigured some bus routes around here, by the way. Just just letting you know what I did. I kind of changed things a little bit to try and get more traffic down to the, the train station there because things are still struggling a little bit. Too much traffic still. Today, I want to solve uh, a problem and also bring a new industry online. Now, the problem is this. Bradford is not getting anywhere near enough fuel and it's stunting its growth to some extent. Bradford is, our, I think, our biggest city on the map and we can't give it enough fuel. And if we actually look at its supply chain, Bradford gets its fuel from a enormous long truck journey that we set up many, many moons ago, many episodes ago. It's huge. Um, and it took it from here. And, and the reason I set that up initially was to increase the demand uh, on this refinery when it was growing. I wanted to get the demand there. Unfortunately, um, it's oversubscribed. Think of it that way. It has three consumers. One of them is Romsey, and Romsey's not getting anywhere near enough fuel. The other one is Mitchell Dean, and Mitchell Dean's not getting any enough fuel. So you see the problem is even just Romsey and Mitchell Dean, it's not enough. Um, it, it couldn't supply both, but supplying Bradford as well, not, you know, it just doesn't work. Oh boy, look at this. We just unlocked the tarpaulin truck, a wonderful tram, and a dual stocks, which is like it's another uh, two tier train which is rather nice. Okay, cool. We're not going to distract ourselves with that. So the, here's what I propose to do. I propose to get some more fuel into Bradford and then disconnect this fuel truck run, which is probably making money just, but is pretty inefficient given how far it goes. Let's have a quick look at it. Yeah, it's just breaking even. Um, it's not worth it anymore. So we're going to sack that, 
but we want to get fuel to Brad from, from a different place. And that will help improve the supply to Romsey and Mitchelding because it'll only be serving those two. And this is a problem that happens with a city when it grows. Um, demand just goes through the roof. Another thing to keep your eye on, and I have showed you this before, is just double check that your current drop-off points um, are still valid. So we can still see, we can see here that the, the truck stop point here is still valid. It's not hitting all of that fuel demand. It can't possibly, that it's too big. But where it is, is still a pretty good spot. And if we go over to Mitchell Dean, with Mitchell Dean, we can see, again, it's it's okay. It might be better a little bit south, but what it's hitting is still pretty good. Uh, at some point, you will have to have two truck lines to make sure you're hitting the capacity of that. Uh, and if we come to Bradford and check that one, well, we can see Bradford is an absolute disaster. Um, originally, the fuel drop was here, if you remember. And what's happened is it's just expanded all the way down here. So this is no good. Um, so we're going to have to fix that. We'll fix that now because otherwise I might forget. We'll just get rid of that. And currently it's here. And you can see the highlighted area is half of it is in the tools district, which is no good. We need to be hitting as much of this as we can. So we just need to figure out exactly where we want to go. Um, anywhere around one of these two roads is going to work. I don't want to get on that bus lane. I want to be on a little side street just so we're not interfering with the bus journeys. But I think either there or there, one of those two will do nicely. It really doesn't matter which. We'll go with that one. So then we'll just edit that fuel truck line just to make sure it's going to the right place for now. And we'll get rid of main road, which is that one. Um, yeah, that's fine as it is. We're going to get rid of that. But for now, at least they're dropping into a better area. So how are we going to get fuel? Well, we're going to tap into something that we've not tapped into so far in the game. And this is here. It just happens to be a refinery outside of Bradford. And I built, I already in a few episodes ago, I built a port outside of it in case we wanted to use this. I remember when I was doing all this work down here, I already built this. So we have fuel right here. And if we bring oil sand over, so large quantities of oil sand effectively, Two of these will make one unit of fuel and one unit of sand. Sand. We've not used sand before. What do we do with sand? Well, if you go to consumers, you can see there are three places that accept sand. And all of them are effectively the same. If you take sand in there, it will produce con mat. As you can see, one, two, and three. This one we're already using. We're already bringing stuff into, but we're bringing... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? lost the word English please slag <laughs> we're bringing slag into that one so we're not going to touch that one but this one down here is arguably quite appealing because the other one which we'll goes back to this the other one is all the way up there which is not terrible um, to get to but it's a very 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 long way and I have a cunning plan said Baldrick so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get oil sand which is what that stuff is I'm gonna get oil sand into here and then we're going to get that sand down to this factory here. That's going to produce CONMAT, construction materials. Now, in terms of demand for CONMAT, Sandhurst, which is here, has never had CONMAT. It's never had it delivered. So straight away, we have a way of selling the CONMAT. We can train it or fly it. We do whatever we want to it, right? We could even ship it over if we built a canal. But we can get CONMAT there and immediately sell it to Sandhurst, which ticks the box for Sandhurst, will help it grow, which is great. If you want another demand, we could go to Elsham. But Elsham is doing okay. It's got a reasonable supply of CONMAT. Uh, struggling even more than that, though, is Thatcham. Uh, Thatcham is not getting any. So if we can figure out a way of getting our CONMAT over to Sandhurst and then all the way up to Thatcham, we'll be able to sell that CONMAT as well. Now, the Thatcham run is probably going to be in the next video because that's a bit more intricate. But I think what we can do initially is set up this set up this oil sand, and I'll talk about that in a second, sell the fuel into Bradford, cut off that fuel line there, and then think about if we can sell fuel somewhere else as well because one supply is probably not enough. So looking around, I don't see anybody else apart from Romsey and Mitchell Dean who want fuel on this side. Mablethorpe is... is 
not getting enough. Loughton is not getting enough. There's options, uh, ultimately. There's options. Or we could start looking over this side. I can't remember if we had one over here for fuel. No, we didn't, did we? No, there's no fuel over this side. So, yeah, it's all going to be top right of the map. So any surplus fuel will need to move out of Bradford and take it over here. But we've got good train connections. I'm sure we can figure something out. Where's the oil sand coming from? That's that's the real question. There's only three oil sands on the map. One is in Loughton, which is up there. Okay. We, you know, we could feasibly ship that in. Uh, the other one is here, which is in the middle of the map. Well, we could train that in. That's kind of over the top of that train, like four lines it'd have to go across unless we bring it into here, truck it, and then train it out over there. That's doable. Um, but there's this one here, which is doing nothing at the moment. And it's this one that I would propose to use. Um, just because we're not doing anything, there's so much available land. How do we get it from here to here? Well, we could have a train line go straight across. But I'm kind of thinking, let's make a canal. We've already got this bit of, this bit of land here. It's not really used for anything. We could cut through the land there and just make that into an island. It doesn't matter. Just make a canal there. And then in order to get over to, um, I've lost it now, in order to get over to here, we could either go up there like that and then maybe canal through there and canal through there, or we could have a bigger canal through here. I'm kind of favoring just maybe canal there and a canal there and just cut those into little pieces there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to ship it in through some canal system to here, make fuel, immediately sell it to Bradford, and then we're going to get that sand down to here somehow and sell the Conmat to Sandhurst. And then the next episode, we'll start moving that somewhere else and we'll move the fuel somewhere else. That's the plan. Let's get started. So the first thing to do really is decide exactly how we're going to cut through this land. And, you know, in the interest of trying to be useful, like this bit here is just going to be a straight connection through somewhere. But if you think about it, if we're going to cut a canal through, why not try and go past some industries so that at least later on, if you want to, we could put a port there and start shipping that stuff out. Yeah, might as well. We're going to cut through land anyway. First thing I'm going to do, though, is we're going to set up the flatten tool, uh, high strength brush, quite a big size. And we're going to go for that circle there. And I'm just going to deepen this here. So I'm going to start by clicking on this part here, which is the deep area. And then I'm just going to drag through there like that just basically gouge that out so remember where you where you click initially the, the exact mouse point cursor is exactly where the the depth is decided for the flatten tool I'm just going to go into smooth and just smooth that out a little bit just so it doesn't look entirely like it's been dredged by some machine there we go uh, so right what do we want to go through well we could go across that bit or we could go across this bit it doesn't really matter uh it's whatever you want to do but i'm thinking why not go in a fairly straight line through there and you know just brush near these things not too close but close enough that we could build a, a, a some docks there if you want to uh but we want to head in that line so we'll start by clicking here oops we'll select the right tool shall we start by clicking here We'll just gouge a nice channel out like that. And just a nice steady hand. That's all that's really needed. And just don't go too quick so it gets the game gets a chance to actually deform the uh, terrain. There we go. We just made ourselves a new waterway. Look at that. Now, I would love it if they added to the game, like, you know, actual straight line tools so you could really make it look like, you know, the Panama Canal or something or the Suez Canal. You could really make it look entirely man-made and straight. But sadly, those tools are not in the game. So we'll just smooth that off. And that should be wide enough. But of course, if you want to, you could just make that wider still. But that should be wide enough for what we're doing. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is then cut straight through here. So we'll go back to the flatten tool and we'll just go straight across like that. Lovely. Now that land looks, that water there looks a bit deeper. So I'm just going to use the depth of this one just to go through this bit. 
It's much deeper because it's a darker colour. There we go. Nice. I'll just smooth that off there. There we go. Fantastic. So, that's uh, dramatically changed the map, hasn't it? That's a proper man-made structure, that is. So, all we need to do now is we need to come down here and we'll get ourselves a piece of road. But we want the non-town version of the road. We can go for a thin one. We'll turn off the bus lane. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way we do it. It's literally just going to be for connecting reasons. But, you know, maybe something like that might do it. And then we'll go to ship. We'll go to a cargo harbour. We'll have large two terminals. Eh, we'll just go for one terminal and then we'll edit it. Um, in terms of connection, we kind of want the terminal to be out in the water. So something like that should do nicely. And then we'll just delete this and then go back with a large dock. Something like that. And then we'll have to just re-gouge gouge the land out just to make sure we can build a docking bit there. Because otherwise, if it's too much land around, it won't let you. So we'll just gouge that out. And then see if it allows us to put the um, the landings back. Yes, it, no. Yes, no. No. We have to cut further back. It is a little bit funny about this. We can always put the land back in a minute. Just got to convince it to let us put the landing there first. Configure. There we go. Right. So we'll go back to smooth. And I'll just bring the size down a little bit so I can get a bit more control. Maybe if we go for flatten, we'll just lift the land up initially. Like that. Just pull the land in. then we can smooth that out and it's up to you whether you want to go for like a, a shallow area here you could you could make it like a cliff edge it's it's entirely up to you it's all just styling at this point but the important thing is we've got our dock and if we just double check on our navigable water display we can see that that is definitely navigable and that is that now where's the nearest shipyard there's one there so we want to go for a line and we'll have what's this called i should actually take take a look at the name did i henley on thames okay henley on thames it is so we'll edit that it's gonna be a ship it's gonna be henley and this is oil sand that's what it's called henley oil sand and for that we'll make it like a dark color oh my god the Deutsche Bahn regionals, they are very nice capacity. Um, multiple unit trains, really good. So we'll go from here to here. And there you go. Look at that, the brand new canal. Otherwise, it would have had to go all the way up there and then all the way back down here. And it just increases. It is a bit like the Panama Canal, this. It just shortcuts everything, doesn't it? Now, when it gets to Henley, uh, we will tell it to wait for a full load, but only for, like... 90 seconds or so just try and load up on some stuff that will bring stuff in so we'll, we'll kick that off straight away the only question is what kind of boat do we want it's it's a reasonable distance the speed is of the essence a merlin will do it we could start with an axle p just to get it running uh, but you know given how much money we've got i just go straight in with a merlin at this point if we need super super capacity later we can always bring one of these out but this extra speed will help so we'll colour this like a, a orangey colour and we'll set it up on Henry Oil Sand. Okay, and hopefully that there you go, straight away it's starting to ship to Bradford. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna land here, and then obviously just double check they're connected, yes they are. Then we need to think about well how we're gonna get the fuel into here. Now luckily for us, it's on the same side as this, so we don't have to drive through any housing missions won't be an issue but what we will need to do is just punch in some better road network because frankly these roads are a bit pants aren't they so let's go with a bus lane upgrade for the four lane road and we'll just maybe just extend this here just make a higher throughput road through there and while we're at it let's cut across there like that 
can maybe increase the capacity of this. Because the town appears to be growing nicely. And that should allow it to sort of drive in though and just drop off. And uh, there's no bus line there. If you press the L key, there's only the truck line. There's no bus line. So, you know, this won't interfere with any buses. That's the, uh, that's the key thing I'm trying to get out of this. Now, how do we connect to here? That's the question. We want to bring the road in and then probably have our truck stop about here. So maybe what we can do is extend this bit of road here. Bring it out there like that. And then maybe we can just upgrade it to the bigger version. This probably won't upgrade because we'd have to physically move it, but that's fine. And then we just need to bring that road down here. Now, at some point, we want to stop the trees so that we, you know, it stops building. Um, but initially, I'm more than happy for it to um, the game to basically build on that section as long as as long as there's a bus lane there. Um, so maybe to like there. And then after that, we flick back to the normal one. So they can't build on this. Come on, game. They can't build on this bit. There you go. Yeah, so there's no, no, you know, nothing will get built there. So then we'll drop it in our truck station. We will be doing a single pickup, um, but we'll put two in there because you never know. Later on, you might have to bring something else here. You never know. Uh, we'll set it. We need to make sure it's in catchment of this, so... We should be alright to go all the way back here. Drop that in. Get rid of that. Put one of those in. And it is going to have to buffer the fuel, so we will need a sizable platform. Come on, game. Come on. Keep up. <laughs> and then we're going to exit out of here. And then drop it in our single road. Like that. And we'll have the exit coming in here like this. Cool. And then the last thing, we'll just get rid of that light because it's entirely pointless. And that one. There you go. And that is going to be our fuel. So what we can now do is just... We should be getting a boat on the way now. While he's on the way, we'll clone him. Wait, that's the wrong boat. That's the wrong boat! just clicked on the wrong thing. He's just taking a massive... What the? Why has he decided to go that way? That can't possibly be quicker than this. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't understand. That is crazy. I, are you seriously telling me that this is, is slower than that? And I'm not having it. I don't think we can put waypoints down with a ship. You can't. Like, there's literally nothing I can do to stop him going that stupid way. I don't know why they're doing that. That really is somewhat unfathomable. How, how can that straight line be... Why, game? Why? Okay, I genuinely don't understand that. Um, what I am going to do is maybe hope that if I cut the corner here a little bit, maybe the game will stop being stupid. Just smooth that out. Give it a bit more room. I, I don't understand. It is only making one stop, isn't it? Manage line. What? That's crazy. Okay, I don't know. I mean, it might need three ships now, given the direction it's going, but, you know, whatever. Um, so, anyway, apart from that, let's see where this guy is. He is currently stuck in traffic on his way over. Uh, we'll release another one. Just to get this going. The problem with ships is they do take quite a bit of time to get established. But he is winging his way over though. There's going to be a lot of stuff sat on the platform waiting. Um, yeah, so while it, what I was going to do was I was going to switch the fuel thing in. But it's not really worth it because it's going to be a while before anything turns up here. So I'll have to speed up time now because ships just take forever to get going. Is that him? Henley Oil Sand? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm genuinely... I'm, honestly, guys, I can't believe this. 
I've never seen that before. It always takes the shortest line. Like, always. I can't think why it would do that. It takes the shortest path. It's even doing it on the way there. So why come back this way? Is it just down to the width of this? I really want that to not do that. Because it's going to increase the, um, the journey distance. Don't want to get this rid of this wonderful spit we have here. Okay. There we go. All right. Normality has been resumed. Um, don't know what's going on, but that seems to have sorted it out. So I'm just going to run with that. Uh, he's on his way. Let's have a quick look how our A380 situation is panning out. Uh, so financially, he's just about breaking even. <laughs> And in terms of finances on the entire line, we've gone from making great money to only just making money. And that is why it's very rare that you'll find that these A380s actually make great money. You could try running fewer aircraft. That would certainly be one thing to look at. Um, or you can just throw in 757s and get a, a more frequent service. Personally, I would just go with a 757. So I'm just going to just relegate them back, get some money back. Uh, they fit on the runway nicely, and hopefully the capacity will work out better and keep the frequency. The A380 is great fun. Um, the game doesn't really scale to it. You know, not really. Over a long run, it might do, but you'll have to have fewer planes. And the game kind of likes frequency as well. So, you know, I I'm glad they put it in the game, but it is a mod, but it doesn't quite work. It doesn't quite work. A bit like this Henley Stone situation here would appear to be not frequent enough on the line. What's the line frequency on that? Three minutes. And it's only just making money. It's a long old run, that one. It's taking stone all the way down here. Um, but the trouble is, it's nowhere near full if you look at it. It's only half full. I think what we should do is reconfigure this. So we'll have, that is a 2 one, what is that? That's the 246. I don't want to add one there. I want a brand new train is what I want. Um, how can we do this? If I clone that and then edit, and we'll basically take some cars off. So we'll bring them down to like 240 meters. The thinking is we'll have smaller trains, but more frequent. Yeah, which will save on expenses, but increase the frequency on the line and hence the profit in total. That's my current thinking because it is quite a long run that. We should be making good money out of stone, um, but we're not. And that kind of worries me a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I, I predict that um, this should start to... situation start to improve. You can see, look, we're already starting to make more money after getting rid of those really expensive A380s. We just might need to add a, another plane or two just to fine-tune it. But while that's going on, let's see what's happening over here. He's now just left with a full load. Left some behind. There's one inbound, and I'll add a third one now. Right. He's on the way, which means we can now switch this fuel line over. So instead of going to Romsey South, we'll get rid of that waypoint. And after that, I want you to come over to here and not go to Romsey South at all. Okay, so you're going to come here. You're going to wait for full load. Three minutes is fine. There's no point going unless you've actually got fuel. And that journey is a lot, lot shorter than the one they were making. So that will mean that Bradford's not going to get any fuel for a bit until this industry kicks in properly. Um, it's still starved of oil sand. But while that's the, way, the trucks will sit here waiting, while that's kicking off, we need to think about what we're doing now with the sand. 
So, the, the way I've decided to do this is with trains. We could, in theory, start shipping stuff in, but we'd need an enormous canal through there, and it isn't going to look great. So, trains seem to be the way to go, particularly with this kind of thing. Lots of sand, lots of con mat. We'll need two different trains, of course, because, you know, sand goes in the gondolas, and then this stuff goes on the flatbeds, or the box car, uh, flatbeds, I think. So, we're going to need two different trains to move these things around, so we can't get paid both ways, unfortunately. Um, in terms of actual building, well... Remember, we want to sell the con mat to Sandhurst. So I had a look at Sandhurst, and you can see I already built an extra couple of cargo platforms which are not actually in use. So we've got a cargo place to go to if you want to come here. So we're either going to go kind of over that way or possibly around under here or something like that. But we also want to get sand to here. Elevation <clears throat> is the problem now because if we go to the contour lines layer, uh, what we find is that Princess Risper, if you hover over here, it, it tells you the height that cursor there. So Princess Risper is at 25 meters. This console line here represents 20 meters, and then that one there represents 30. This is at 25 meters. And the destination that we're going to is at 5 meters, because it's right next to the sea. So we've got to go from 25 down to 5 meters. Additionally, we're going to be crossing multiple train lines. And if you look at the train lines, these are at the same height. These are like 27 meters. So they're at the same elevation as that platform there. But there's no point keeping the same elevation to here and then having to drop down to five meters. You know what I mean? You may as well try and get that gradient all the way through. This and this train line are at 20 so we've got an advantage we can go straight underneath these two because this is at five so my first thing to think about i guess is can we what will happen if we just draw a track straight from the start to the finish what will the game do with that well and the answer is um it works it actually works we knew it would work here it goes straight underneath here but what's happening is the gradient as it goes up steadily is still enough to go right underneath that platform there and that would give us a very consistent gradient upwards uh, before eventually punching through what does it come out the tunnel here so we'll change that tunnel type to something modern like that and then we'll change this tunnel type to something modern uh, and it looks like it's going to give us a small tunnel there and another one further down, which is a much longer tunnel. So I'm happy with that. A $6 million build. And if we go in now and just quickly smooth that out. I'll just break through that land there. That's more than fine. And then it goes all the way under and then we don't see it again until it eventually pops out here. So we'll, what we'll then have to do, we'll just link this one through as well, which is great. I love that. Nice, nice, consistent gradient. Just what you need on a train. This one, of course, doesn't want to build because the game can be a bit weird when it goes through multiple tunnels. So we'll have to build it in pieces. So we'll build one there. Hopefully it'll let us build this one here. There you go. It always seems to be when there's more than one tunnel, it gets a bit weird. So can we do a diamond on this? Oh, what's it done, game? Come on. Let's try drawing the track back the other way. There we go. That's better. There we go. It takes a little bit of convincing, and then the game goes a bit bonkers. Um, but we can fix that, hopefully, if we just get the terrain tools out. If we just take this land here and just cover that up. No, it's not going to have that either. I was hoping that would sort it out, but that's that's just full-on proper weird now. So what we'll have to do is delete all of that. Um, and then we'll put the land back. That is very strange, isn't it? There's a tunnel type. Okay, we may have to put the diamond in the tunnel. Do you know what? I think it's just going to go bonkers no matter what we do here. Let's put it in the tunnel there. OK, 
Okay. So we can build the diamond here, but if we put it here, it makes the tunnel go strange. So uh, whatever game. <laughs> we'll just go with that. Um, point is, we've got a nice straight line all the way through to here. Which will allow us to bring the sand in and then take the conmat out. Right, so the final thing to solve is how do we get it over to this bit? If we go back to a contour map, this platform is at 16 meters, okay? So 16 meters along there, and then this is at, what, 10? So it, the land drops away down towards the water. So what we're going to be looking to do is to try and keep 16 meter elevation because what we don't want to do is go down and then go back up because this has to go from 16 to 25, yeah? So we want to keep our 16 for as long as possible. So what we want to do is try and figure out whereabouts is 16 is about here, there. That's 16 meters there. This here is at 28. So there is scope. I'm thinking there is scope here. If we go for about there-ish, where is it? Maybe where's 16 there? There's 16 right there, just to the right of that rock. If we drop a piece of track in, that just to mark that 16 meters i'm hopeful that what we can then do is drag this straight in hang on the game's playing catch up though come on game it's trying to intersect with everything okay there we go that is the cargo platform yes it is right yeah there you go so what it's what it's trying to do now is keep a nice gradual um, elevation through there and then we just need to decide on the bridge type which is going to be that one I think that's not quite navigable underneath if you look at that it does break the navigation of the water here is it a problem possibly if we press shift uh, press M actually is it yeah it's got to be quite elevated to make that navigable so I'm just doing shift N and bringing it down gradually. I don't want to break the navigation on that water. I think that's the best we're going to get away with like that. So that takes us to the... How much does that cost? 1.9 million. Okay, we'll get rid of that now. And then the next bit to do is just figure out... Yeah, it looks all right, doesn't it? We're just going to figure out how to get this up to here. I think it should go underneath. Um, we'll have it on a separate track for as long as possible, I think. So what will happen if we build... Oh, do you know what? It's done that same thing here that it did back there. Very annoying of you, game. Right, there we go. Are you going to do it this time? Yay! Thank you. I think, like I say, it's all to do with double tunnels. When you have two tunnels in one line build, it does go a bit wonky. Um, what we'll do is we'll drag that over there and see what it thinks of it. Okay, it doesn't really like that. There. That's the sweet spot. Just there. If we come back a little bit, it keeps it in the in the tunnel like that. And that's the sweet spot right there. And then we'll change that to that. We'll build it. Lovely. And then we'll just basically run this parallel to there. And then up to here. And then they can join together. And that just keeps them. It's extra expense, but it basically keeps the trains away from each other. And then that bit too. Ish. There we go. Right. Quick smooth. I'm not so keen on that being a bit wonky though. You see that? I think that's where I put the piece of track and it wasn't like perfectly aligned with the rest of it. So I think we can do a little bit better. We just get rid of that and then redraw it in. It's still ever so slightly contoured, but it's fine. And then up here, where the train comes along, 
we'll just merge that over. What's the best we can get away with that one there? 200, that's more than enough. That slows down quite a bit for that one, doesn't it? Yeah, if we go if we go with this, it'll slow down to 86 on that join, which I don't particularly like. So I think what we'll do is um, try and convince it not to do that. Keep the line speed up. There we go. Doesn't look as great though, does it? Looks a bit weird. What if we delete that? And then try and follow this one in. It's 129 through there. Okay, it's not quite as... What the heck? I, do you know what? Sometimes this game is weird. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Let's try that. What it is i think you're better off going over like taking one track over and then take it over again and that way you can just maximize the line speed up all the way through and then it just kind of it gets it you know seems to be how it is it's not a perfect game but it's a darn good one there we go right Cool, so we've now got a link through to here, so we can get our goods back to there. Let's see if anything's happening over here now. We've actually got oil sand coming in, look at this. 130 oil sand. Stuff is happening here, but not a lot is happening with the fuel trucks. Uh, first of all, there's far too many of them, because we had loads for a very long journey. Uh, so we don't need anywhere near this many now. Let's get rid of a load of these. See how we get on with that. Also, they're pretty old. What would it be like? So we've currently got this one here, the 40 ton, that has a capacity of 30. There's now this thing that has a capacity of 38. So we could just upgrade the whole fleet and get the extra capacity. We might as well. And that should be loading up nicely now. Lovely. Finances on the oil sand shipping is looking pretty good. There's a ship coming in, so yeah, I think that's that's looking pretty good now. Obviously, that'll continue to level up as the demand kicks off. Uh, but let's just focus on finishing off our train line. So we need a depot in there that can feed both of these. I'm thinking we just stick a depot back here, um, off the off the back there. That will do. Just do that with it. It's unlikely we'll build this way, but if we do, we can always change that anyway. So the final bit, the jigsaw, is this. Wow, okay. Dear me. <laughs> um, okay, that looks like a, a capacity problem. We'll swap them out straight away for the streetcar, and then we'll add some more capacity there. This is a lot. What I'm noticing is there is a truck depot that we're not actually using, I don't think. So that's brilliant. We can then define where do we want to drop off these construction materials. If we have a look at this. The Conmac is the problem with this town, Sandhurst. Do you know what? I'm highly tempted, highly tempted to just build this landing. Because they are so stunted in their growth right now. They can't expand. The town is, is bursting along the riverbank there. And I'm very, very tempted to just create this into a, a bit of land and just let the city grow. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. We'll have maximum brush size and we'll just build it in from like here. Get rid of this water. Thanks game, that really helps. Thank you so much. That was, that was perfectly timed. 
those trains there, those uh, power cars, are wonderful. We'll play with those in a, in a future episode. They are genuinely fantastic. Okay. That has transformed. Look at that, straight away. It's like, boom, we can build. Come on, boys. And we'll give them like a little key side, effectively. Yeah, there's just huge demand, though. Um, so we've got a nice high-capacity road going through here. I expect this will expand nicely. But just to help it on its way, what we'll do is we'll just give it some starters, some suggestions. Um, we've got this horrible parallel road here now. Sorry, boys. It's in the name of progress. here as well. We'll get rid of these little tiny bits of road and just let it redevelop that. It's just, it's just nasty otherwise. Uh, same with this one. I think we'll just upgrade these. Yep. Okay. That's, that's going to help matters, I think. Construction not possible. We'll see about that. give a new lease of life to Sandhurst. There we go. That will help it. Um, in terms of our drop-off point, what we want to do is try and hit as much of this con mat as we can without affecting any bus routes. Um, I'm expecting them to build out this way as we begin dropping off. So I'm thinking let's start it by going here. Um, we'll go from... So this is going to be Sandhurst con mat. This will be their first Conmat delivery ever, and that will go from there to there. Uh, let's have a look at the routing. Um, not hugely keen on that routing. I think I would prefer it if they stuck to that road. So when you come out of there, go here. Yeah, that's better. And then on your way back, always go back that way. Just help the traffic management a little bit, I think. Then we'll stick some trucks in. They won't be able to do anything right now, but con mount will be those, so we'll just have a couple of them in there. They can run at a loss for a little while. Um, when they get to the annex, we'll tell them to wait till full. Might as well wait for a little while because there's no point driving through town unless you've actually got something to drop off. So that'll park two trucks there. The next thing is we need to get the sand line defined. So this is going to be um, Bradford Sand, I would suggest. Bradford Sand. And we also want to have uh, Princess Conmat, which, <laughs> which is a ridiculous name. Princess Conmat. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. So we'll have that as red. Uh, we'll go from obviously here to uh, here, like that. And then Bradford Sand will go from. Wait, what? Bradford Sand, where have you gone? Okay, I just managed to rename that somehow. Bradford Sand. Thank you. We'll colour that a sort of sandy-ish colour. And we're going to go from here to here and make sure we go on a different platform. I would suggest we swap these platforms over just to stop the, the crossover that I don't think we need. Um, so that's just one of those optimizations that you can do that the game doesn't figure out. There you go. And that stops them from interfering with each other entirely. So the next thing we need is trains to deal with this. Quite an, quite an elevation change, but nothing that we can't handle. Uh, so let's get the good old Series 246. We'll stick some gondolas on the back. We'll maybe just go with 240 meters worth initially. So let's add another one. Just go with that initially. Color it yellow. Just 
stick it on the Bradford Sand Run, and then we'll have another one, and this time it'll be the Conmat. Uh, wait, 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 what's going on here? Okay, let me just do that again. Um, now thinking about, I think it's one to one, isn't it? Santacon map, but we'll double check that in a second. Um, but let's drop back to 240 capacity. So that is, yeah, one sat. Oh, two. It goes to two combat. Forgot about that. In that case. Wow, two combat. This, we're going to be, we're going to be rich boys. We're going to be able to ship combat everywhere out of this. One to two is fantastic. It's usually the other way around. Um, great. Okay, so let's grab him. He's probably still in here. Wait a minute. Did I not buy him? Did I not deploy him? There he is. Oh, he's, oh, I haven't put the signals in. Hang on. <laughs> I haven't put the signals in. I'm so excited to do this. Um, yeah, let's stick you on maximum 320 meters. That's uh, Signals. Right. Um, yes. Yeah, this is going to be a disaster without signals. Blimey. Uh, before that will do that, I think... Oh, you scumbag. You scumbag game. One way, yes. Go on, replace them, I dare you. No, you don't. You don't replace them, do you? Replace them forward. Remove. Remove. Yes. This existing. There we go. And then... Now, where's the diamond? So we want to come back the other way, and then there's a diamond interchange here that we kind of want to signal just before. And then that is a contention zone, which is unfortunate, but, you know, we saw the tunnel shenanigans. So there's not a lot we can do about that. And then... It's really hard to see which signals belong to which bit of track now. Um... Second, we have that. Oh, piss, how many signals on the way back? Okay, that brings us to here. And did I not put an interchange there? I thought. There's the, there's the. Yeah, okay. Right, so after the exit from there, we'll come from this way. And then one there on the way back. Uh-oh, didn't like that. Did not like that. I think the train just got a bit confused. One second. We tell it to do that and then that. There we go. I think it just got confused by the new signaling. It was traveling. It was basically taking the inside line and then we made it one way the other way. It went, whoa, what's all that about? Nobody told me about these one-way signs. So, yeah, that's okay now. That should work. Right, let's just leave that and uh, see how it gets on. So, this stuff here should now be seeing Princess Risper as a consumer, which it is. So, it's allocating its stuff. We want to make sure it doesn't run out of stuff now. Um, that's going to be the big challenge because there's only three oil sands on the map. And if you look at this, this is two to one, one. So, yeah, if this completely caps out it's going to be hard to get more of it because there's only three on the map and the other one one's in the middle of the map somewhere and one was all the way up here so it's, it is doable to ship it but it's a long long way once the shipping line's established though it should be fine anyway so that's the sand done that's hopefully some fuel is being moved hopefully this is now still getting fuel again i really hope it is so there was a bit of income there. Right for fuel. So this is the original. Now the income's starting to rise as we're moving fuel again. 122 to Bradford. These things are slowly filling up. Part of me's thinking we'll change this to wait for 60 seconds. 
just to get that frequency going on this line so that, that starts to chuck out more stuff. The oil stand is coming in nicely. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's doing okay. I think we set out to do what we wanted to do here. Let's have a very quick look at what's going on. Okay, yeah. So now, financially, we're in a much better position, but we're just not moving enough people. But that's okay. We can afford to drop some more aircraft in there now. Frequency is a great thing to have. You want to be having like one taxiing out, you know, one going out, one coming in is an ideal place to be. What you don't want is if you put too many planes on the circuit, what ends up is they end up sort of, they end up doing, um, they can't land, so they basically do a go round and it just wastes a load of money. But I think we'll be, uh, we'll be okay here. I say we'll be okay, apart from we've just got stonking amount of passengers to deal with now. Put a lot more vehicles on that to get people. See, people are really starting to use Bradford as a hub, which is exactly what we thought would happen. Um, which is it's good and bad. I mean, we've just got to deal with the demand, but Bradford should be 17,000. Look at that. This is a real, real hub right here. People come from everywhere now just to get on that plane and fly off. Anyway, sadly, guys, we have more than run out of time here. Um, these boys can be upgraded to the towboat because the capacity is more than that. Um, we run out of time. We will pick this up in the next one. We'll see how we're getting on with this line here, and then we'll start dealing uh, Conmat uh, out of here, hopefully up north somewhere. We'll figure that out on the next one. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new for more content. Leave me your comments with your thoughts on what you've seen and whether you're enjoying the series. And uh, consider becoming a YouTube member. Just hit the uh, membership button on the YouTube channel if you fancy supporting me. If not, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care. Happy constructing.